you know, you know that we want to collect points. The points in in November, October are just as valuable as March, and I think we won in different fashions than than we maybe have done during the season so far. So you know, you go to Saturday is is the easy one where it's. We're getting more comfortable playing in one-goal games, uh, even games. There's no question we've been in our share. Um, but then we hadn't been in overtime, and we hadn't been in a shootout. So right away, you give up a very glorious scoring chance in the first three seconds of overtime. And, and thankfully for Trace to shut down the door and then give us a chance to get that point in the shootout. Uh, Friday, you know, you're, you're coming from behind, and it's hard to chase games in our league, and especially St. Thomas. They can skate. They make plays. Um the crucial goal was probably scored after they went up 3-1 that we made it 3-2 and got some momentum coming back our direction. But when you looked at that game, you probably saw more balanced scoring, and that was a big piece of what's going to happen here. This time of year, you're looking for scoring up and down the lineup at times. Are, is there a particular line that you like the makeup of, aside from that top line, that's contributed offensively a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're still a little bit, you know, in, in motion project. Uh, you know, Eisen and, and Pitt and Groller have, have had their share of offense. Uh, you know, Moore's on a little bit of a heater with, with scoring, so whoever's played with him. Um, and it's been a variety of guys, whether they started that way or ended that way. And um, and then I, I just think a huge contribution that's not probably talked about enough is the ability for – some combination of 18, 19, 25, 24 to shut down the other groups. They play against everybody's top line pretty close to always, and um, they found their way to to keep pretty good players off the score sheet. You get a couple guys back in the lineup that you didn't have the week before and Eyes and Psychos. How nice is it to have those guys back in terms of the depth of your lineup and just what they can contribute? Campbell was vital. Um, he, he played an excellent weekend of hockey to come back, especially after being out for two, three weekends there. Um, he's partners with with Wheeler, and, and those two, <clears throat> he made Wheels play some good hockey this weekend and, and vice versa. So their comfortability with one another is really high. Um, you know, eyes, it's tough when you, when you go through and you miss practice time during the week um, it, like he did, and he got back into full reps on Thursday. Your timing's a little bit off. Your sensitivity to your surroundings is a little bit off. Um, I thought his first period against St. Thomas on Friday was off. Um, but as it adjusted and wore into the, the weekend, his game was was pretty crucial to what happened for us. So, yeah, we're going to get closer. Um, we've got some guys day-to-day and week-to-week yet that could impact the lineup. We, you know, we had Bonkowski back in the lineup. He hadn't played in a long while. Uh, we're still... Uh, Finn Williams is about as close as he's been, you know, in probably a year worth of hockey. And then uh, Bolts is still out for a little bit here. Two top scorers on the team are Rhett Pitlick and Brian Carabas. Uh, talk about Brian a little bit in terms of what he's brought, you know, third line, second line, depending on the night. But just his contribution as of late has been really well, well done. Yeah. Um, you know, fortunate enough to coach Carbs earlier in his career in junior hockey, and he scored those 20, whatever, four or five goals for me in, in the USHL, which is not an easy number. Um, maybe he went into a scenario at BU where the, the timing, the coaching change, all of those things weren't in his favor. And I think when you get a guy to come out of that a year ago, like he had some highlight moments, but I think he had a lot of like, okay, I got to get back into hockey a little bit. I've been out, I haven't been in the lineup on a regular basis. He's extremely dependable. Um, he doesn't give much up, uh, yet we want to talk about the way he can skate and score. So uh, that's a good combination for him. He's got a, just enough bite to his game to be a pain in the, in the backside and yet generate offense. So Carbs has been doing a good job. He's got to be a shot mentality guy. And, and Pitt, Pitt just creates. I mean, um, <clears throat> there's probably some frustration for Pitt because there's – Two sides. One, he's he's missed, and and you know he's had some opportunity, off, offensive opportunity looks that that he hasn't maybe connected with. And at the same time, um, he's definitely set his share of guys up that haven't finished. So those numbers can be pretty inflated pretty quick. We're we're quick to talk about scoring chances in our staff, and um, you you want the positive versus the negative, and he's finding that. Uh. 
decision was made last week um, in regards to Canadian junior hockey. Do you have any thoughts on that decision and the potential for the CCHA to potentially get better as a result of that in the future? Uh, yeah, I think the CHL players, the guys that are playing major junior, um, this first wave, I think everyone's going to find out that academically they might not be in check with all the necessities that we have uh, for NCAA hockey. I think as this thing wears into it, uh, there will be more emphasis on students. Um, you know, I, I think there's going to be some unintended consequences that that, that are not going to be favorable for, for college hockey. I think some of these CHL players will be more possibly one and done's or maybe you get two years out of them. They've played for, you know, sometimes five years of junior hockey prior to. Um, and then I think there's just an unbelievable, because there's a pool of players up there that are that are talented, that maybe at some point in their life that was their only option that they really had their teeth sunk into as a young age. And uh, they haven't seen a college hockey game. They haven't been to a college campus. They haven't seen the atmosphere of, of what it takes when you win in all of the surroundings. So uh, there's going to be some, I think some good players that, that serve purpose in the NCAA route. Um, and it could just take a little bit of footing. Same time, you don't want to lose sight on your own recruits, the guys you've got time and, and energy put into. This week, you get another CCHA opponent in Northern Michigan at home. What are the things that the team has to do to remain focused? Because when you're at home, sometimes distractions can creep in. Yeah, maybe we got to be good about it and growing up about it. Um, everyone can look at Northern's records and have whatever they think. They're, they play hard. They've, they're coached well. They've been in an unfortunate situation. They're three returning players, uh, maybe a lack of experience that, that have played there on campus at Marquette, but not not lack of talent, not lack of, you know, they haven't had a full lineup per se, I would say, the whole year. So there's plenty of goods in their group, and there's plenty of highlights to talk about what they bring to the table. We're just working hard to, to figure out us and, and really make make sure that um, if someone's going to beat us, it's going to be an opponent and not beat ourselves. So uh, we, we want to make sure that we just keep focusing, growing, and a big piece of that is being stingy on the, the defensive side, but yet creating offense and getting our guys a paintbrush that says they just go be creative and be responsible when the time says so. The community service aspect of this team continued over the weekend. Uh, what did the guys go out and do, and, and how did that impact the community? Yeah, I mean, uh, they went out and raked leaves for the elderly there on Sunday. It's a special time. You know, we – it's just – it's it's important to us. It's important that we do more than hockey. Hockey is the fun. Hockey is the un unbelievable opportunity we have here. Uh, reality sets in that, that we got to go earn, you know, earn these people to come into this building every weekend and do what they do for us, which is amazing. Uh, we want to make sure we get back. Uh, we've been very active with the, the youth hockey and the, there's a, uh, Mankato has got a special needs hockey team going on the ice now that we're, we're getting active with that group and, it's just good for our guys. We, we It's a sense of humility. It's a sense of reality. Um, at the same time, wow, what an opportunity for our guys to share their platform with, with others that maybe don't have that opportunity. Averaged over 4,000 fans for home games this year. Uh, just as a whole, how nice is it to have that home support week in and week out here in this building? It's fantastic. It's, uh, it makes, it makes us a really special place. Um, you know, I, I love that the idea that they just know hockey. Like if you were at the game on Saturday, you saw a one-one game. You're like, well, that could be boring, but that wasn't a boring game at all. That was a good hockey game. Um, you know, obviously the shootout's a treat uh, for the fans. It's not a treat for a coach, but it's a treat for the fans. Um, it's just it says volumes. I mean, I love it's just not all students. It's just not all community. The blend of of the folks that come to our game and the youth groups that are coming out to our games, it makes it an unbelievable place and we'll do our part to to make sure that we try to ensure that they're back in their seats every weekend 